Welcome to another episode of SOS VHS. Today we're doing, again, uh, something special. The Bad Friends crew is here to discuss movies. And we are talking about uh, The Big Lebowski with George and Carlos. Hello. Howdy. <laughs> Hi, guys. <sighs> well, okay. That's a good Caucasian. <laughs> mm. Like all the Caucasians. Yeah. Um, you say that a lot, don't you? Yeah. Good Caucasian. <laughs> right. That's what George said. On January 6th, that's a good Caucasian. That's a good Caucasian. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you guys see this movie for the first time? Did you Were you hiding behind my dad while he watched it downstairs and I heard all the F words and eventually he softened and let me watch How old were you? Oh, gosh. Um, 12. 13, okay. around there. Wow. I think George and I were in high school. Like yeah. We were in middle school. I was definitely younger, and um, I had this big fear around this movie. Like, I felt like my dad, like, he would judge me while watching it because he's this surgeon. And it's about a guy who, like, didn't, <laughs> like, he didn't, like, finish college and all he, that stuff. His or, fear was that you would take that route, that that's a, a role model for you. Exactly. <laughs> and, I was all, and I was always like, oh he's projecting onto me he kind of was right i know it's, <laughs> it's funny because it's like oh i kind of like yeah. molded into that even i used to live also over there at santa monica and highland yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, what about you george um i think this was a senior year in high school so i'm a little older yeah. than uh than old like me. same um and i think it's the first movie i ever saw twice in theaters because <laughs> i yeah i saw it the first time full packed house i thought it was the funniest movie ever then i think I saw it again and there were like 10 people in the audience and I was the one laughing. And my friends uh, like who were there like, you laughed a lot at that movie. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, it was actually one of the first DVD movies. Like it was, it was not a hit in the theaters. So I think I'm fairly uh, prescient and smart in my... Uh, <laughs> like Usual uh, Suspects, those DVD, early DVDs. You were ahead of your time. No, it was the biggest DVD release. Oh really? Like ever? Like because the movie didn't oh, didn't do didn't well in that. theaters. Fight Club was also one of those big DVD releases. Yeah, too. that's interesting. People didn't find it as funny. It wasn't a good success. And then I mean, it slowly became well, it a takes cult a movie. Touch of intelligence to get that uh, their jokes there. It's, it's instantly funny, like from the narration on. It's silly and smart at the same time. It's very. I mean, how can you come up with smart? an idea like this? <laughs> Yeah, because like they, they, I think like there's a lot of criticism and irony about art and 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 certain people and I don't know. The what well, is like a film noir without <laughs> yeah, yeah. the mur? I mean, there is like uh, hints of murder and death and stuff, but it is like <laughs> technically a film noir. It's a dark movie set in Los Angeles, and the only difference is that it's in the '90s and not the '40s. Right. It's like um, I think they said that it was based on the Big Sleep, or like those Ram mm -hmm. Raymond Chandler novels yeah. with all the random, you know episodes happening to to the character but yeah. kind of like making fun of that structure and always in central los angeles that was kind of like the yeah. key ingredient to those famous it's a very bars. la movie yeah um yeah i i mean i saw it in spanish for the first time <laughs> so, always <laughs> so have you rewatched it at all in Span spanish <laughs> no i haven't watched i want to know who like yeah what the but uh what do they sound like I, I thought, I mean, my brother and I loved it. Yeah. Loved this dream sequences, the crazy things about it. Uh, it's one of those movies that we watch a bunch. But then I watched it in English and I thought it was even funnier, you know, and like understanding a little bit of the cultural references. And yeah. Also the language and like the actors are so good. I love movies. I love this movie particularly because it reminded me of like, it, it was like swingers, like these LA movies about guys without a lot of money, but it even went harder. It was like, no, in Los <laughs> Angeles, there are people who just never grow up and in their fifties, they're still bowling. Yeah. And I found that very unique to Hollywood in central LA in particular, which is, it's a place where you can kind of just zone out and do your thing. And I don't know if that's the case anymore because it's become like Manhattan, just like, or San Francisco, very expensive like tech hubs and entertainment hubs. But in the 90s, I feel like you could still be goofy and live in the middle of LA. Yeah. I think like, they would live in the valley now. <laughs> yeah, or they wouldn't even move out here and they'd live in Austin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But how is he only 10 days late on rent? 
Like, how did he make that? the the month That's before? That's so late to be on rent. Like, I could never pay my rent ten days later. No, but did you think about no, it? No, but he's wait, like how is he going late. to? How is he going to get the money? Like, that's what I always wonder. Like, he's ten days late. When is he going to get so the money zen. together? I think he figures it out every month. I mean, I love when he comes back. You know, in the limos limousine after losing the money and all of that, and he's like. You know, whatever, you know, things happen. Yeah. It's all cool. It's, it's good. Life That's will be the mantra okay. of those kinds of men. And that was such a crazy thing to me, just as it yeah, was the for you guys. Mantra. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, even the uh, John Goodman. The bums will not win. Yeah, I, even I, Walter I, says that. when they, I'm with your dad now. I wouldn't let you watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your favorite character? Are you the dude? I, my favorite character... I don't know. I love seeing Flea in the movie so much. <laughs> I, you know what my favorite character is? It's Philip Seymour Hoffman. He's the funniest one. Yes. <laughs> so good. Yes. So good. I think I base all my interactions with Bobby Lee on on oh, no. me being Philip Seymour Hoffman. <laughs> I think you are. Yes. The, God. The Who? best The best is when, uh, uh, what's her name? She says, I'll, I'll, I'll suck your dick for $1,000. And Philip Seymour Hoffman goes, <laughs> I'm just going to go find a cash machine. <laughs> we all love... <laughs> We all love Pity Penny's uh, Bunny. Right, buddies. What, what do they say? We all love her. What? Uh, a sense of humor. Or, yeah. 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 I emailed Tara Reed not long ago <laughs> and I saw an IMDb pro. She just puts her regular email on there. That's I was fun. like, I've never seen that before. <laughs> it, it, if it's true. Yeah. It's like T Reed at AOL or something like that. And she never replied. It was to be on this show. Yeah. <laughs> Tara, come. <laughs> I think my favorite has always been John Woodman. I think he's such a funny, funny character. Mm -hmm. I've never seen him so, so good after. Uh, but I love all of them, like the tiny one, like Donnie and and and. What about Estus. the son? I oh, see. Okay, so when he, they saw the bad grades, I was like, oh my god, bad grades in a movie. Everyone's gonna look at me, and my family right, <laughs> right now. Whenever there was a student with bad grades, I always like try and like, oh, I'll go to the bathroom right now. Just like, so I don't want them to bring up my grades. So seeing that scene just like brought me right back to dude, being in seventh grade. That's so funny. <laughs> No, I was a pretty good student, so I, I didn't... Yeah. I, you were. You were valedictorian, right? <laughs> yeah, but... Oh, we don't have to go over <laughs> that. <laughs> and, and that was incredible. You were valedictorian? Yes, I oh, was. Oh, gross. <laughs> I know. That's awesome. Yeah I, yeah. I think that's really cool. George, don't be competitive with him right now. <laughs> it's cool. We can enjoy our brother's success. <laughs> yeah. That's not success, I think. <laughs> it's nerdy. Um, but anyway, I, I, I always love that moment when he destroys the car. Because oh, okay. I think, like, you know, he's going to crack up. I mean, I feel all the, the movies like that. Every time I'm thinking something's going to happen, then they subvert it, and it's even funnier. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I it made me laugh so much. I think it's so quotable, mm -hmm. too. Like, you, you know, you remember tons of lines. You say it, and like, it's part of pop culture. Even today, like, I think, like, the, the you are out of a... You're out of your element, Donnie, mm -hmm. or, you know, shut the fuck up, Donnie. Yeah. All of those things. Those like, I still burgers. hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's so zen I even when after they destroy the, his car and everything and then they cut to they're all in the car and the two of them are eating burgers because he wanted to go to In-N-Out yeah the, it's and like, it's Santana playing <laughs> yeah 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 so good so good um, but yeah are you were you guys like a huge Coen Brothers fans or growing up uh, I liked Just, Fargo a lot I but that's because like Entertainment Weekly like always wrote about it and I was like I gotta see Fargo because I didn't see it in theaters uh, and Steve Buscemi was in it yeah so I, I love Fargo and I didn't like um, Oh Brother Where Art Thou I thought the trailer was good <laughs> Because the song was good, but I didn't like the movie that much. I thought it was a difficult movie for me to understand. I, I, I was still in Spain. Like the, the, it's the Odyssey, the, right? Is the Odyssey well, generally it's, very generally? I read, I, I heard that, but it's just anything is an Odyssey, though. That's the thing. No, but it's it not literally the Odyssey. But they no, but he goes, he runs into like three sirens, <laughs> right. and Things like that. It is like it's, the, it's set in the, the Civil War, yeah. and it's yeah. It was like maybe a little over my head, like when I watch it or yeah, the song, the was references. Good. But the the song was really good. Yeah. And uh, I think they did Fargo three years later this, and then two years later, Oh Brother. I loved um, Inside Llewellyn Davis. Amazing. I it's yeah. like the most the last. It's a movie you would I never thought I would love so much because like I like Bob Dylan and all that, but I'm not like super into folk music from like Oh the, Brother was so much better though. <laughs> Come on. No, Inside Llewellyn. I mean, it even has John Goodman in it. I think it's very depressing. 
from yeah. the inside, uh, like also anyone trying to pursue a career in, yeah. in the art scene, like how many other things, you know, he was so good. He was good. He was good, but he wasn't that good. You know? Yeah. And and therefore, he takes the money early. I just love Oscar Isaac so much. He looks yeah. like an Al, he looked like a young Al Pacino at the time. And I just thought he was so handsome and such a good actor that, but we don't have to talk about him. We can talk about <laughs> the big love. Bowie. He's a dad again. <laughs> he is. How many Al, Al Pacino? Oh, I oh, oh okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oscar Isaac, Oscar good Isaac. for him. I, yeah, all right. Is I saw news? Oscar Isaac on my plane with Kalila once. Uh, we're yeah, coming out from remember. New York. Yeah, I talked about it for like three months straight because I couldn't. He's a cool dude. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, whoa. <laughs> but with with these guys, I feel like um, he, them and Tarantino to me were like because when they did the you know violence and humor mm -hmm. very different styles and everything yeah. but like i felt like those were the my you know late 90s 90, uh, early 90s guys you know that's like your venn diagram and uh, yeah violence that's and the humor. type of thing that i i felt so attracted to those movies from of course blood simple and and then reservoir dogs and mm -hmm. fargo and, and and pulp fiction you know like they crime but it's funny it's like yeah. petty people like i don't know i i and then you mentioned that they are always uh just middle class normal guys and it never happens to someone outside of like that group which so, makes it more interesting because yeah, it's us it's yeah like everyone can be i also like just like a i feel like the coen brothers do this really well or all great artists do it well when referring to this but like just the examination of like everyday life is so interesting to me compared to like oh the wolf of wall street or something like yeah. i would love to watch a movie about like someone who works at like a grocery store or something because that is just like that's just like fascinating someone art. who works no, at, I've, at, at, at I've a done that in dog school. rescue i don't think uh you wait you made a movie about someone no no there. i've i've worked at a, at a <laughs> supermarket i don't think begging groceries is that Quite I want to go into that world. I live in Los Angeles. We all work in show business and artists <laughs> like are generally not working at a grocery store. So like examining it and giving it heart is, I think, very interesting instead of like, um, you know, like going to South Beach on my iPad. And stuff. yeah, I think if you're a country singer, you should do that <laughs> like half the year touring, half the year work at a regular job. <laughs> you keep your soul. Yeah, but, but for I, anything else, no. Yeah, I want to see Wolf of Wall Street. I want to see like, exceptional people. Yeah, I, I mean, I think they both have. It's interesting to open the world to the to, to open the door to a world that Carlos's you're not Top Gun to. is about the mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think you that wanna, would be cool. You want to watch a movie about like someone working at a dog rescue, you know, and like yeah. and a great adventure happening to him. Have you seen the movie Somewhere that Sofia Coppola made? Yeah. Yeah, it, I feel like it was um, like there's like a whole scene where she's like scrambling where the fanning girl is like making eggs and they show her actually making the eggs and right. scrambling them in basically real time. And I just like art like that. Yeah. And I feel like the Big Lebowski is like um, it's like a camera taking a picture of art like that, which is like an everyday person in Los Angeles with no education who basically repeats the words he hears constantly around him, whether it's George Bush or Walter. I love when he asks, asks ask uh, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman with the, the, the kids, the community kids, is there room for one more <laughs> oh, yeah. college? And he goes, oh, you didn't go to college. <laughs> and he goes, no, I did. I was occupying various uh, administration buildings. <laughs> it, you know, he's definitely a super interesting guy. Also the, the, his take on the world. I mean, the, the, him and John Woodman both, like, because they're both idiots. They both have their own philosophy, but they have a lot of heart, and so it works. It never, yeah. you know, the planning of the, I guess, handing of the money. You know, I I rewatched it yesterday, and I, just, and I was on the floor laughing. And I my know. wife came and was like, "This is so silly." I think it's so funny. Yeah, you know, I love people fucking up. It's yeah, just like mm -hmm. they're idiots, and that's yeah. all his. You know, Fargo is about idiots. You know, committing a crime. They're all idiots, yeah. and that's why it's so good. I think or so unique. But I feel like so many. I mean, we can call them idiots, but I feel like so many people are like these characters. Like I literally relate to these characters, which is embarrassing for me to say. <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, I could totally see myself. You know, I'm divorced. I like just chilling in Hollywood, <laughs> bowling with my friends. You know, yeah. One of them's George. One of them's Pete. You <laughs> yeah. know, taking care of like, your ex's dog. Yeah, like. How is that a bad life? Being Jewish. Yeah, that's such a fun... <laughs> yeah, I turned Jewish. <laughs> but I just think that's a great life. And I don't know. I just... But how do you survive like that? Where does the money come from? It doesn't from? take much I to would, survive like that. Mm, they I live in a horrible in area. LA, yeah. 
I mean, like, his place is horrible. Does he have savings? Is there a trust fund somewhere? Where is it coming from? I mean, I've been to that house, the Malibu house. It's the James yeah. Goldstein <laughs> estate in the hills. He goes to basketball games a lot. I went to a party there once, but I always see him at uh, Laker games or, like, the big Thursday night NBA on TNT games. I'll wave and yell, James. <laughs> I mean, he, but you're right. His house is terrible, except for that rock that... Yeah, where is the house exactly? Santa Where's Monica it? and Highland. That's like the area. It's just one of those bungalow type deals that were nice uh, yeah. 60 years ago. And now it looks now like probably... it looks like a shithole. So like Silver oh. Lake or just... No, no, no. I think it's old Hollywood. Okay. Oh. Yeah. It did look like a little bit... Like, I mean, I'm not familiar with that area. I did. The buildings look like, like Silver Lake or like Los Feliz. Yeah. Just like an old Hollywood style. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I I think the movie also has a lot of rhythm. You know, it starts it start with that scene and the um, the narration. It, well, it start with the narration, which is also very interesting. It, it looks like a little bit of a western, and he plays with that like the the. I love that narration. How, how do you call that thing? Himself? The dust, the tumbleweed, the tumbleweed, <laughs> and 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 Sam Sam Elliott narrating yeah. right, and it's beautiful. I think I think I saw an interview with them saying something like that. Sam Elliott was like, I don't, what, what am I doing here? Had you know? no idea what he, what his purpose was. <laughs> right, right, right. And they were like, look, Trust we don't artists. know, just like read it, you know? And then he was like, oh, we didn't help with his is performance. Is he God? <laughs> or is he the dude's ego? I don't understand. Or is he just our um, trustworthy narrator? <laughs> That's very, He's our reliable narrator for yeah, no reason. It's I think it's just a joke. I don't think it has a, a higher cool. purpose, you know, other than... I really love that. Because you don't need him to tell no. the story. If you take his <laughs> scenes out, the movie is shorter by six minutes and works perfectly. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's just a fun introduction to Los, An Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. I love when he says, and, um, do you have to so use so many darn curse words? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Cuss, cuss and then he just walks away. Yeah. Your the way, fuck dude. you talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think they have like uh, 250 F-bombs. Yeah, it was one of the record holders <laughs> yeah. next to Goodfellas, right? Goodfellas, I Wait, think this was, was over Pulp Fiction. <laughs> yeah, Goodfellas is number one. I thought in the nineties. I I, can't that, I mean, I haven't. I think Wolf of Wall Street might have beat it. But this is like insane and and all for for comedy, which is obviously why like you can't show like a twelve year old me like right. oh all these grown ups cursing. Obviously, Carlos is going to say that for it at church tomorrow. Yeah, like yeah. I can't have him watch this. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, what about you? Like in, in your high school with your parents and all that? Was that? No, I watched it in the theater with my friends. I didn't okay. have they, no parents around. They didn't know, yeah. I think my parents watched it and they, they, they liked it too, so I wasn't... Well, did, they, uh, did, they, did they cheat the F-bombs into something else in the Spanish? I, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. No. I... Yeah, I think it was rated R there too because yeah. of language. Sex and, and stuff, yeah. Yeah, um, but it, it was like... I was... Oh, were you guys able to get into like, you know, R-rated movies like all your life or your parents were- My cool whole life. Or, yeah. Me yeah. I, uh, my, I think, I don't know if I talked about this on the Jurassic Park episode, but like we would sneak into theaters and just stay the whole time. I, yeah. Because my dad wasn't going to not watch a movie he wanted to watch because <laughs> of his idiot son. He was sure. like, no, he's going to sit here. I want to watch his damn I movie. I see. So, yeah. Yeah, you my could, first uh, R movie was Predator '87. <laughs> you was get a ticket for some long. other movie, and then you sneak. Yeah, uh, you, you go in for a little bit, and then you leave. Yeah, yeah, we did, did that, that my whole lot. life. Yeah. yeah, but when I was growing up, there were two uh, VHS stores in town, and there was one that was a little bit more on the up and up, mm -hmm. and they would like actually card the kids and make sure you couldn't get ones. And then oh, there was a little. Oh, annoying. That's so then there was funny. the other one that was a little bit trashier. Was it a porn or something? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it felt like it was like it had it, that, but uh, that was was the one that I'd. Went we, to get like Cheech and Chong movies from. The, <laughs> we were a blockbuster family. Yeah, I mean there was no they, they blockbuster, blockbuster in Spain. They official. were more like like niche uh, or whatever, like mom mom and pops. Like uh, that's what you went to VHS stores. That's and cool. my brother and I, every time we could, and my parents were going out on date or with friends, we would rent the most violent movie we could find. You know, and all these like Asian movies. Like yeah, and I remember my, my dad coming up one time from 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 this um, going out. Yeah, and I, I think a babysitter was passed out on the couch, and my brother and I were watching a movie where like someone was getting pale, and <laughs> and he just went and, like ejected. You know, but I I always found like violence fascinating. And and and, and really. same here in the nineties. Like <laughs> I remember. Well, this doesn't have to do with violence, but I remember my dad coming downstairs and what, and I had sun 
Sundance channel on. I was watching Hedwig and the Angry Inch. He's like, you really yeah. have your uh, own taste in movies now. <laughs> I think he was calling me gay. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, dad, I, I understand all the indies in the late 90s. Mm. Yeah. Um, so uh, what's your favorite moment in, in, in The Big Lebowski? Gosh, um, I I know mine. What is <laughs> what, it, skeleton? Is, yeah, you son okay. of a bitch. <laughs> okay, no, you're a son of a bitch. <laughs> okay, go on. All right, okay, all right. So my favorite scene is <laughs> when uh, the dude goes to see Lebowski and he's sitting in front of the fire. Bonnie's gone. You know, Requiem and uh, Mozart's Requiem and D minor is playing very dramatic <laughs> mm. and tragic, right? And he's like, you know, what 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 makes a man? <laughs> <laughs> yes and, and, the du- and the dude is just he's just sitting there and he's like mind if i smoke a j <laughs> no he goes mind he goes, if i do a j, do a j. <laughs> so and, good and he's like uh it's like is it i forget what he says but it's like oh yeah that and a pair of testicles <laughs> yeah goes, I suppose what you're makes, right. it's the second time he asked what what makes a man yeah. lebowski yeah. Yeah. What jokes makes man? at a time like this <laughs> i suppose <laughs> i suppose you're right <laughs> yeah. and then uh, i just love just the um the dichotomy between the serious you know guy handicapped guy in a wheelchair and then the dude just smoking a jay going that's a that's a bummer man that's a that's a real bummer he's reading the ransom note that's a bummer it's p- puffing away just not a care in the world there's something about that scene that just a little bummer, uh, bummer i agree with you yeah. skeleton i feel like the my favorite part is just seeing philip seymour hoffman back away like perfectly yeah. like he's in the military he but... does all the choreography with his body he's so, so good. such a good actor it made so. me miss him a lot because i, I don't know i just it's so sad when artists like fall to their own like yeah like in that tragic way like he fell and i don't know just how many me... bags of heroin <laughs> okay skeleton you know what i know I just because you're in the afterlife doesn't mean we have to joke about the afterlife <laughs> I, I can do all the heroin i want i'm dead already but... wait do you know philip seymour back there <laughs> I, we're doing heroin all day <laughs> oh that's nice look, at me. We're, look i'm chilling man all right well throw it into my dimension <laughs> and give me some he was no, no man that's all mine philip <laughs> seymour hoffman was advertised when i went to school as a professor that would teach acting you know wow I was so excited because i i thought i was gonna meet this guy who for me was like hero you know yeah like, that's crazy. not a big big star but just one of those actors who could and then you went and he wasn't there he wasn't there he i think he had taught the class one time you know and it was advertised forever it wasn't like james franco and all his girlfriends at usc <laughs> yes yes exactly so although i love dave franco <laughs> and james actually yeah i mean yeah uh, <laughs> i don't know what to say <laughs> other than i have a good friend that uh that i've produced or well a good a friend who has produced uh his movies early on oh know? nice it's like the ones that he directed and all of that i saw a guy driving in front of <laughs> way me to just... name drop without even dropping a name i know like, i'm just i have that's a friend. the way to do it that's the way to do it but i you know i was driving on the five yesterday and the guy in front of me had a howl uh-huh. like a uh, sticker on his car and i was like how <laughs> i didn't even see that james franco movie. yeah 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 it's uh he it's... he was actually at school at the same time that george and i were were in film, he was doing creative writing at the same time, you know. So, oh, but wow. he was already famous. He wasn't Harry in Spider Man <laughs> at that time. Yeah, he was a floor was... below us, and uh, and yeah, some yeah. of the the girls from our class would like hang out on that floor just to see if they could see him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Someone asked, uh, "He's you a know, real yeah, hound." Would you be in my movie? You know that yeah, type yeah. of thing. Um. Well, okay. So that's uh, Skeleton's favorite movie. What about you? Uh, favorite scene. What about you? Ah, favorite scene i you know what it's just a beautiful scene that um it's that long lens shot and it's not all the way slow motion but it's when uh jesus uh hits the um, oh. it's when the gypsy kings are playing Cal- uh yeah california he does his thin exactly but it's the long lens shot just not that one oh. it that's a part of it <laughs> but when they show the three guys and Donnie turns around. I think it's so beautiful and it reminds me of the long lens shot when Bruce Willis is in the bar at um, in Pulp Fiction when he sees Jules and Vince wearing the Santa Barbara shirts. So I just thought that was such a beautiful thing. And mm. I it was impactful for me just to see different kinds. Like it, it felt like real art when I was watching it. And when there was a studio like in front of the movie, like and there was like cool shots like that it was very impactful for me seeing that like oh studio movies can do these things that i'm seeing like the indie movie guys do yeah like it's transferring over into hollywood i mean it has tons of great visuals this movie because it has all those uh, dream sequences that are awesome it's amazing it's uh, even when the the bowling ball like hitting the pins becomes 
LA at night. Yeah. And by the way, LA at night is so beautiful back then. It's so captured because it's on film. It's not this like perfect high definition, like sprinkling city of Los Angeles. Also, you have the best photographer in the world doing that movie. Is that, so tell me about that. I don't know anything about that. Uh, oh, his name is Roger Dickens. Uh -huh. He's probably one of the, I mean, consider Roger. We we'll keep going. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> Uh, say it again, <laughs> Ro Roger Dickens. No. But yeah, he's a he's a Your name is Roger Dickens. <laughs> he's a he's a British DP. He did 1917. He did Skyfall. Oh wow! He worked with Sam Mendes a lot. He works with the Coen Brothers a lot. Um, Finally, won an Oscar. Yeah, he 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 won an Academy Award for. He did Blade Runner. That was 20, Blade, yeah, Blade Runner. He won the final nine. Oh, I like that movie a lot. Yeah, and 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 when they met, I keep, because when they did. Because I want a hologram girlfriend. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you you like Ana, Ana de Armas. Oh my God! Yeah, I yeah. would pay anything that, for that one. I get, I I get it. <laughs> that checks out. I think. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you my Ana de Armas story in another day. But um, <laughs> oh, did you know a person who uh, met her I, once? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I met I met her once. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I have a friend who I will not name who uh, <laughs> who was dating her. Okay, what about you, George? Favorite uh Well, I've scene. got a scene and a moment. The okay. scene, of course, is when uh when they're spreading Donnie, Donnie's ashes. Mm. Oh, so and I was like, gonna you you stole it from me. That's I, the I, greatest it, laugh I think of the whole movie. At least like the first time you watch it when you you, you don't expect it to happen. It's a beautiful moment and then you just cut back yep. to see the dude <laughs> drenched in ashes. Yep. Just uh, <laughs> miserable. <laughs> and and his face is like he doesn't do anything, he just stays there mm -hmm. and he's like you laugh so hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they do that a lot with this movie in terms of having a little bit of an emotional moment. You think it's going to be finally some sort of yeah. gravity to it. Or, and then they do that. And, and, he, and he talks about Nam. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I think that's such a theme in this movie. Or like just in life in general, if you don't go to college and you just bowl all night, is that nothing good is going to happen. <laughs> Like, yeah. you, like, so you should just chill and smoke that joint and listen to music because, like, don't leave the house. Like, like the whole movie goes wrong for them. And then there's a moment. There's a <laughs> okay. moment. Okay. Okay. Moment. Yeah. Just on this recent rewatching, remember when John Tuturo, the first intro of the Jesus, uh, the Jesus, oh, the Jesus. he's, yeah. this is he's so going door to door. Oh, yeah. Okay. To tell everybody he's a petter ass. Go, <laughs> has to go door to door when he moves into his new place in Hollywood after he gets out of Chino. Yep. There's a wide shot where he's walking in the fence. Mm -hmm. Dude has a full-on chub in his pants. They, it's a quick shot. They they and then, they fill his oh. his his uh, his pants with. Uh, I forgot what they used it's for, like but they static. They but it's, fill it. Out George with, showed me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing it's, they did that. It's just a two-second shot. Bump, bump. You you don't even notice it because he's small. Like the shot's this big. He's they fill it so big so you could see it in a wide yeah. shot like that in the theater. So that's actually insane. <laughs> I've seen that movie like eight times and I never noticed that. And mm -hmm. if you think about it, this movie doesn't do that at all. Like the idea of like a flashback to a moment. Oh, no. And they do it just for this. And it's just, I think because they could, they broke the rules, you know, and kind of like, this is not how movies are, but yeah. they, it's like, it's funny, let's put it in. They did their family guy moment where it's a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can cut to anything and make it funny just by saying it happened right That's like the time i moved to hollywood <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's a bad peter impression <laughs> i i yeah i i think that uh, that made me laugh so hard because also it's like silent they, they, they he doesn't even have a word like he knocks on the door and, the that guy, and you yeah. know that yeah. something might happen to him and that's it <laughs> eight-year-olds dude <laughs> <laughs> I, I love his accent too and how you know when when telling he has that line I, I I'm gonna misquote it but I said like wanna take that gun shove it out your ass and gonna pull the trigger pull the until it's click. click yeah and then the guys are all and then he moves and it's like Pedro uh, no eight year old eight year old <laughs> eight year olds dude so the way that they talk they feel very real that's what I thought like you know the characters mm. were real like it felt like although. I didn't know any of those guys. Maybe you knew, knew some of those guys, but I thought they were real, though they existed in-, in Oh, I definitely know guys like that yeah. in Los Angeles. Like, just dudes. Yeah. Just guys. Just straight dudes up. Dudes or Walters or Donnie's? <laughs> Donnie's and Walters and dudes. Yeah. That's how I would say. <laughs> just like, just dudes living in LA and they're doing something later. I don't know what it is. I'll call them. Right. That's just the way it is. Yeah, it's like kind of like a hangout movie with yeah. all that complicated plot. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't matter, right? Because this whole, 
It's a, such a complicated thing that it, he's going to, and he keeps saying, oh, this is a complicated case. You know? <laughs> Lots of moving <laughs> parts. <laughs> I got intel. You're not privy to that yet. Exactly. Like, yeah, that's and, so funny. But you can get end- yourself involved in stuff like that, I feel like, in life, if you're just like open to it and you just <laughs> open the wrong door accidentally and you reach out to the the wrong person you know you shouldn't have reached out to i've been involved in weird stuff like i get yes, it like i think you i mean i i <laughs> more and more i feel like your dad was right i'm oh, telling yeah. you like he was like okay he knew you've been involved in weird stuff <laughs> yeah he, of course i've been involved in weird stuff and he has been open about it <laughs> yes i have <laughs> did you would you cut your 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 pinky to get a, a million dollars <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would a million percent. My pinky? Yeah. I don't need that. <laughs> no I, way. For I love dollars? that moment, right? Like, and then the Germans come and, and it's like, okay, without, there's rules, right? Without a kidnapping, there's no ransom. <laughs> and it's like, oh, just g- get me whatever you guys have. And they have like $4 each after asking <laughs> for a million dollars. You know, mm-hmm. everything is so absurd, but it kind of makes sense in that world. Um, that bowling alley is on Vermont, I think, right? Is it? Yeah, it was, I think it was the first... No, no, it was. It was the first bowling alley I had been to in LA. And yeah. then, like, right after, like, that Lucky Strike became popular, it was, like, in the new 90210 yeah. and all that. But, like... Uh, Did you guys grow up bowling? Uh, yeah, it's like a birthday it's like party. like a date night stuff. thing, you know, something you do that you're both bad at. Well, I never did a date night. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well, it's like... Well, you're the true. married one. Apparently, it worked. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I should have went bowling. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I thought it was so beautiful. It kind of like mystified a little bit bowling for me. Have mm. you ever been bowling? I, I was, you know, I went bowling after seeing the movie. I wanted to do it. And I step over the line. Have you ever and, done it? And out of my butt. Over the line. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it was, I didn't know it was, uh, you know, waxed or whatever. So it's I ended up on my, on my ass and, and the ball in the other alley and everybody. <laughs> Why'd you step over so. the line? Yeah. Don't I you know the know. rules? You, you <laughs> saw the movie. I know. I you didn't. saw the movie. It wasn't the on one purpose. Th- it's hard as fuck. Bowling is fucking hard. And it yeah. gets tiring after three times. Yeah. It wasn't It wasn't for me. But I thought in the movie it looked beautiful. And, and yeah. all the bowling like references. They made it look so cool. You know, when yeah. he's sleeping with the bowling sound. And, oh, yeah. You know, as, as, what was on the other side? Not... Why is What's B-side Bob? <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? No idea. Is it yeah, Bob Dylan? That mean- That's so <laughs> funny. I wonder what that <laughs> yeah. means. Yeah. I always assumed it was just like uh, one of his league games that he won. And he's <laughs> listening to it again, like over. I know, again. but there's the, the, A side is a uh, is the game. And B side is Bob. <laughs> oh, it's probably Dylan. I yeah. would imagine. I feel like that's a good theory. That's that's funny. I bet he like loves it. folk music. Yeah, and there is a Bob Dylan song in the of course. Movie, so yeah, yeah. La, 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 <laughs> la, la, which is la, the la. the best song in the movie. Yeah, I love that. That is sequence. my favorite scene, like the the dream sequence. I mm-hmm. thought it was so original and fun. It's like a almost like a James Bond credit yes, sequence. So funny, but subverted. That's so crazy. It really <laughs> is like James Bond. It's like just as good as the James Bond opening. <laughs> right, right. But but so funny with all those those elements that you've seen the rug and the like. The you know you see the thief that's of very Baghdad. film noir though. To yeah. like introduce all the goofy characters you will come across in this one, or it's very like. Like James Bond, like, because <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. you see those characters at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, you can tell they're huge cinephiles. They know all the genres. They can play in all of them. You know, they can do. They're combining a lot. It's very beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love that. Um, Since we don't have uh, rapid fire questions, I want to give one question to everyone. Okay. All right. And with this question, you win <laughs> and you also lose at the same time. Oh. So fill in the blank. Dark arts from the skeleton, of course. Yeah. Ready? Yes. Yeah. The blank is not the issue. Rug. The rug. Damn. I got that. <laughs> that was it. Damn it, I tried to trick you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think that their, their sense of moral morality is strange too. Because they all have their own values, you know, like he... Yeah, they bend them. Completely. Walter has his own rules, right? As long as those it fits in the rules, he's going to behave well. It's just yeah. It's his own his own rules, you know. But that's not real morality or like integrity. Like integrity, <laughs> right? In my yeah, it's supposed to be constant. Everyone should have the same rules. But to these guys, it's or to like. But it's real world morality. <laughs> exactly to you, me, asks. anyone else. Like the idea is that we all have the same rules, but in reality, like they'll just do it. Like he pulls a gun on someone, but like loves the dog. <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah. Or the fact that that's I, all. 
dog people. Come on. Yeah, I would pull a gun on someone. Yeah. I, that's why I don't have a gun. <laughs> I know some, someone just told me they have a gun, and I was like, oh, that sounds nice. And I was like, no, don't get the, a gun. The, 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 yeah. Yeah. Don't get a gun. Yeah. I think I would shoot it on the freeway <laughs> just to be funny. And I would like film it and then send it to you and Bobby and Andrew. <laughs> and then there would be like the police showing up at seven Equis. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. I have a few students doing that with uh with Gun? fake guns and the in the highway trying to shoot a oh an action gosh. movie. That is so illegal. And they the police came, the whole Are you thing, serious? A huge thing. And yeah, that's a big deal. And yeah, especially in, in this country. I feel like if you do yeah. it somewhere else where like guns are not illegal is not the first thing that you think. But imagine like people you know, with guns and all the other passengers, you know, all the other yeah. cars. Everyone would cops. immediately start <laughs> yeah, filming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's crazy to do. That's like a yeah, I would be afraid to pull out a fake gun in LA. Of you know, it's course. funny as I did that once. Okay, I'll tell you this. <laughs> have you ever seen a gun in LA? Of course. But yeah. I'll, t I'll tell you, I have a, f I, I had a fake or a, like a BB gun like a while ago when I was in Hollywood. <laughs> and me and my friend Jeremy, we went to the gas station mm -hmm. and I brought it just to be goofy. And he goes, this is all about to be the biggest misunderstanding. <laughs> and I had it like in my sweatpants. It was like about to fall. And I was like, dude, if this fake gun falls that I painted the top black. <laughs> black. So it looks real. Like this guy's gonna shoot me. So yeah, yeah, it, it is definitely. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, it's insane. But you know what? Kids, I, don't don't I, pull fake guns around. But you know what I've done to like drivers? Like if they make me mad, <laughs> what? I I'll do this. Like like I'll I'll have like a fake gun. You I'll have be like, like I promise I have a real one. But right now I'm just showing you the fake one. <laughs> <laughs> That's is, your version of the middle finger. Is finger guns? This is it's worse. It's, road rage. It's, it, you have yeah. road rage. I do, and I've been working on it. It's something I really talk about in therapy. That is so thanks, cute. Haley. That is very cute. Like you're good. Pew pew. <laughs> no, no, they I get afraid. Like... I swear they get afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would be afraid. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Oh. God, I need to change that fucking up now. <laughs> oh, no. Where's my vape? Oh, there. And you said you guys know a lot of Donnie's? Because he's also, I think, like, obviously, I love all the characters, but with yeah. him, because, by the way, he was the protagonist of Fargo just three years l um, earlier. Yeah. He's called to do this movie where he says three lines, right? There's and in three years, he goes to help the powers <laughs> after they fall. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> His best comedy yet. Uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> but he's, no, I think he's just so, so 9 good. 11? Yeah. <laughs> He was like a volunteer Donnie firefighter. Was in no, see Buscemi. <laughs> yeah, he went to the towers to help. Yeah, he did? yeah, he did. No, he no, he there. really did. He, live, he lives. Uh, I think he lived in in Brooklyn or you know close to close to. Yeah, there's pictures of him on downtown. Yeah, I saw Sam Rockwell last time I was in New York. I thought that was cool. I was like, oh, Sam Rockwell. Interesting. Yeah, I had a coffee. Walking. <laughs> you're yeah. You you belong in Hollywood, Carlos. You do. <laughs> well, I'm just saying this because it's you. I'm, I'm, right. I, I want you to know I saw Sam Rockwell. He's like one of my favorite actors. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's amazing. Yeah, I love that movie Three Billboards. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. My friend Brendan was in that. I went to see Brendan. I saw Jason Bateman at a coffee <laughs> beat once. <laughs> what, yeah, that's going? also good. Well, I saw Jason Bateman at a uh, Froyo place like a couple of years ago. My ex-wife cut in front of him in line. I was like, you cut in front of Jason Bateman? Get fucking back here. <laughs> I, saw hey, Dennis, I saw Dennis Miller at a Costco. Uh, jealous. <laughs> this reminds me of Shakespeare. Okay, <laughs> we'll go on. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's also like, interesting to see how their actors like move from, from movie to movie because- Of course. Lot Simple, they wrote, they wrote for Holly Hunter he she couldn't make the movie mm -hmm. they hired Francis she ended up like marrying, marrying him, him yeah. and, and being all, all the movies she's incredible incredible everything uh, she fucking does I'm like mesmerized by her acting she's like Philip Seymour Hoffman yeah where, they're like top top yeah, actors, I, yeah I don't even know like Fargo she's amazing is she acting favorite. though like that's my question to you are like the best actors even acting or am I just watching like an incredibly charismatic human like well the you, first job of an actor is to be interesting then it's to be real yeah. yeah or are they just doing the ultimate magic trick on me yeah I is think, that what philip seymour hoffman's doing i think there are different different methods right they call yeah. it the 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 method the actors Kaminsky the ones method. that the <laughs> so there's the, the method acting which says you know you have to relive moments in your life draw from your life that's right things that so you can mimic cry the emotion that this character is feeling at this time so you can cry for example if, if someone dies like someone has died have died in your family go and and try to pull from that memory but it's any way to cry right it's not just like oh like if someone dies on screen you have to think of death you can think of like something that made you cry 
Yeah, but usually it's like it's, it's the same it's, thing. It's the, okay. Yeah, the same idea of like with every emotion. So you draw from your life, and then there is a different system which is more like the British. Uh, you know, I mean, the ultimate actor who does that is is British, like Daniel Day Lewis. You know, who will like live in character. He needs to be called Mister President for like six England. months. Yeah, he's 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 British. No, I know he is, but is that like no, he's still no, talking? No, no. He. He continued talking about uh, right. method acting. That's, yeah, method oh, okay. acting. But then oh, okay. the, the, the he started more, a new paragraph and then continued and with went the, back. The, you're right. The yeah, you're right. You're right. Confused. But yeah. the the British method more is like, hey, you control your body. Mm -hmm. You don't have to live. You don't have to call, like the, the memory uh, to to your past. You don't need that. You just need to be aware of your muscles, you know, the Meryl Streep thing. Yeah. She can be on character, you cut, she goes back to normal, she doesn't need to live that character. She I can, see. She can do it. And there's extraordinary actors on both. And, and Yeah, yeah. I like the British way. So you, like, I, let's do if it. If you can do it, like the British, <laughs> yeah. like theater people, like that's why like a lot of great actors come from from the British training, yeah. you know, in theater. The and American like, way seems like dramatic. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. There's Relax. A famous, you're not... famous in the Marathon Man where like Dustin Hoffman has been tortured okay. for, for days and, and, and the torture of this Nazi who is like, you know, years after after the World War II yeah. uh, and, and he's now in New York and has diamonds. Anyway, it's a complicated plot, but the, he, uh, John Oliver, uh, Olivier. Yeah. Sir John Olivier, yeah. who's British. I they, love last week tonight. They, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, co they come together and he asks, hey, what what happened to you? Because Dustin Hoffman comes to set, he has bags under his eye, he hasn't slept all night. Yeah. He, he basically is living like his character. Yeah. And he asks him, you know, why don't you act? Yeah. You know, why why are you like that? Why yeah. don't you just? It's just a movie, just yeah. act. You know. But for the other people, they need to live it. So I think both whatever worked for them. Yeah. I think with this movie, I think James Bridges is a. Uh, can can do both you know i i don't think he lived like the dude his whole life i think he's just such a good oh actor. that's what i and think it, too. i and also <laughs> the actors we know would never do that they would no. never go that far for the role yeah the actors we know <laughs> are like give me a red bull right after i don't care if this is the 1700s <laughs> right. vaping during the scene <laughs> like there is also the, you're the getting oddly specific carlos <laughs> yeah. yeah there is also the, the hollywood the star system thing where like a character <laughs> is like you know it's a a humphrey bogart or like a george clooney yeah he will always act the same and it, it, it is his persona gets introduced you know gets yeah. ma matched with the characters so i see if he does like a harrison four he does what he does he does it really well so it doesn't matter what the character is he will always act the same yeah and even in indiana jones he's just like that character where he's with rachel mcadams <laughs> right morning show movie <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. that jj abrams did i fucking love that movie <laughs> by the way it's so good but he's he's just a charismatic uh person and he yeah. can do what he can do and then you bend to that okay and he doesn't need to do the sam rockwell or sort the you know the the completely chameleon actors that can change from from movie to movie and okay so that different. helps me because now i'm like oh okay so in the big lebowski they're actually doing old-fashioned acting because like they seem so charismatic in the movie every actor yeah. in the movie that i'm like are they really acting or are they just like putting their tiny spin on how they actually are but i'm like wait a second no they seem to be like world class acting there they're, they're yeah i think they're top top notch and also i think like their writing is so good Mm. I think the movie, you know, the directing like and all of that is good, but like yeah. the writing is so good. Well, didn't the Coen brothers say Jeff Bridges would come up to him before a scene and think uh, his only the only notes they gave him for on acting were Jeff would come up, hey, do you think I uh, smoked a J on the way here to this meeting? And they were like, yeah. <laughs> and he'd like put his knuckles in his eyes. They were getting him get him red before before the scene. I, oh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the only note they ever gave him. Mm. Yeah, I think they downplay their, you know, they don't like when people analyze their movies and they downplay their, you know, the preparation. Like I like a, that. a lot of artists do, you know. When I went to film school too, like we would meet with with big directors and they come in as like it looked like everything is improvised and it just comes from the soul and it's not like actual job that you prepare for. Oh, it's yeah. not helpful for people who want to do it, but it mystifies the world and I think they do like that. Yeah, it's funny because <laughs> there's like mystification about like comedy in that way too. Like uh, an easy example is The Office. Everyone in the world thinks that's like improv and it's like it's like the exact opposite. Yeah, written improv. to a T. You know? Yeah, exactly. Hitting <laughs> the mark. It's it's literally written to a T. Right. Like there's marks all over the ground. They don't show the floor on purpose because yeah. – 
that kind of comedy takes like extreme like writing. I also heard for the fucking office that the way they would do the scripts is they would put them page by page through the hallway. It just to like visualize the three act structure. Interesting. Yeah. Just like, that's how, uh, that's how perfectly engineered it was. Yeah. I feel like improvise improvisation comes from, from, you know, being so well prepared. Mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. that then you can go off beat and come back you know or have ideas because you're ready to do the preparation versus a million what percent. Bobby might think improvisation is which is like oh I didn't read the script I'm just gonna go <laughs> there and be myself yeah but Bobby's been on sets <laughs> that's, where just, the- that's just with your stuff <laughs> yeah well Bobby yes. you keep on being very specific to, <laughs> to Bobby but he's been on sets where there's extreme preparation preparation and then they go into improv like right. the example is Apatow obviously because his scripts are never just 90 to 110 they're usually 125 <laughs> to 140 but then, on top of that there's fucking improv so yeah yeah, if that was shot on film, it would reach from here to the moon. That's so much fucking film. Yeah, a lot of the comedies, well, we, we learned that comedies is a, are about reaction shots, you know, mm-hmm. kind of like the joke works, but it works way better. Like the, the, the thing that George was saying, right? It is funny that the that the that he's pulling the... Exactly. But it's only when you cut to the ashes being completely on him that yeah. it is funny. The joke gets completed with that. Yeah, I always forget how like editors are such a big part of that. Yeah. Comedy. And, and this, so it. the Coen brothers write their movies, they produce their movies, mm-hmm. they direct their movies, and also they edit it. Oh. They have a, a certain, uh, like a pen name for, you know, oh, I didn't as, know as that. editors. So they do the whole, the whole thing. Oh my god! Which is quite incredible, I think. Yeah. And usually they, you know, one is credited as producer, one as director, both as writers, but yeah. they're both doing everything. Yeah, they don't care because the money's probably the same or something like that. Yeah. They're like, just figure it out. That's fascinating. I yeah. want to know what uh, each of your guys' favorite Coen Brothers movie is. Hmm. Inside Llewellyn Davis. Oh. Wow. I'm, I, I... You re- it resonated with you? Yeah, much? just, well, a lot of movies that resonate with me are more wa- uh, warning signs. Yeah. I like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. if you notice, like, my favorite movies are always movies about, like, people, like, struggling or something. Yeah. And I have the biggest, I've had this fear since I was a kid, mostly because my dad in these movies and, is that I would be, like, a loser or I would be X, Y, and Z. And, yeah. like, that's why, like, oh, do I smoke weed? Sure. But, like, I'm not in rehab. You know what I mean? It's like I do have to have boundaries, and that's why I'm so hard on myself as well. Yeah, it looks like your, your dad casted a big shadow in terms of, like, success, being successful, and then you, yeah. you feel but it like helped you have me. to, to all, you know, yeah. and I beat him. But it, <laughs> not even that. It's like, it, well, that, but also, like, it helped me so much because I feel like without that kind of warning or fear or guidance, yeah, yeah. like, I would have been, like, a loser. And, mm-hmm. like, I don't feel like that today as a result. And, um yeah, these movies are like a huge part of it. Yeah, I think that movie, I mean, to me is more like, I I've, I really like the movie, but when that last scene comes yeah, and seeing someone so talented, yeah, there's only one Bob Dylan, right? Mm-hmm. There's only one Steven Spielberg. There's only one yeah. Mozart. There's only one of those. But I feel like the movie is like so devastating. It's like there's so many people with talent that will never make it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I don't like the movie because of that, you know. Oh, yeah. You know what's funny? Well, it helps I don't. I don't want to think that way. But it helps me in Hollywood because I don't want to be Bob Dylan. I just want to be someone who makes art and is proud of my life and right. knowing that I didn't give up. I just want to make it, even if you're not Bob Dylan, you know. Yeah, I just want to like. I I think I love the journey that we're all on in Hollywood, yeah. and to me. So I feel like I live my dream every day mm. um, because I don't want How do you feel, Andres? <laughs> I really do. That's like literally how I feel. Like I feel happy and right. there are things I want, but I love my life. Like I, like, you know, I've had suicide around me before and I've always thought like, I never want to die. Yeah. Like I have a lust for life and that's, I feel like it yeah. allows me to take risks. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Your oh, movie. Big Lebowski. I got to ask yeah. everybody. I... What's the movie you've made every uh, every girlfriend of yours watch? Because for me, embarrassingly, it is The Big Lebowski. Interesting. It's uh, The OC season and, one. No, I'm, <laughs> and I'm, I'm never happy with the response. You right. know, it's, it's uh, but that that's a great choice because it's the most, it's the easiest watch. It's like it's, the most fun watch because you can't just throw No Country for Old Men. It's like, hey, sit down and watch. No, but I agree with watch. George too. Like, it's I think, not the easiest watch. We, Try, oh. but have you, how many how many girlfriends have you watched it with? <laughs> yes. I watched Joe Rogan the, with all my girlfriends. <laughs> it's the least easy watch, but I get, I, I think in the end uh, that they sit through it is the- <laughs> I, I agree with George the, because- more like, than- 
I also think like the movies that I saw between when I was like maybe 12 and 18 are mm-hmm. I, there's n- not another movie that I'll watch today that'll match that that memory yeah I think the movie today might be a little slow it maybe I don't know what it is I I rewatched it and it was really funny I watched it with my wife she didn't find it funny you know? really and she didn't connect with the movie the way that I did. Yeah. And I think it's more like a male movie than a female yeah. movie per se, but. Oh, you know what? Raising Arizona is the, is the date movie to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damn. That's why Pete's married. Second movie too. <laughs> they made. Yeah. Such a good movie. I was movie. married. Now I'm dead. <laughs> so okay. sad. You know, I, I always love Big Lebowski, but I think for me it's Fargo. Fargo. It's so When I watched good. Fargo, I was like, wow, that's the type of movie I would want to make. And that's what I'm saying. Like Fargo and like Pulp Fiction come Kind Even of the like show the is good. It's good, but the show is so much better. The show is so good. And it has so a lot of- So awesome. So I don't remember the actor's name. It's a British actor who plays the bad guy in Fargo season three, the guy with the with know. the toothpick. Oh. He is in oh, Big Lebowski. Yeah. He's the guy who only laughs at, at Julia oh. Moore. And I was like, oh my God, that is the bad yeah. guy on Fargo. And then obviously, uh, what's the protagonist of Fargo? The show, uh, the the first season. Billy Bob Thornton. Billy Bob Thornton is in in, in a Coen Brother of movie. Course. Like there's like the the world is him. there. I thought the show was so good. I love Billy Bob Thornton so much. But I love the movie, and I think the movie is like the this idea. Of, I call them idiots because they're not mastermind crime. You know, it's not like exactly. watching like a Heat, Ocean's Eleven, yeah. or, or Heat. You know, yeah. it's like no, it's like. Complete regular guys who had no idea how to do this. They decide to kill, you know. It's, That's what really happens because, like, people try and commit caught. crimes every day. Like, there's housewives that try and, like, kill their, you know, husbands on the dark web. Like, right. crimes it's, it's, never go well. That's why I'm always afraid to commit real ones. Yeah. You know? Also, this. The, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I it's could like, never. I mean, I. So, Fargo is also a warning for it's you. It's a warning. Like, if I want to get rid of my wife, let me not do it this way. <laughs> you know what's funny is. I've all, God, this is so (laughs) embarrassing. I've always thought like, you know, Carlos, if you don't work hard and like stay true to the Lord and all these things and do, do all your work and, you know, just think of your dog and dad and mom and all these things. I always thought, oh, like I would be like a criminal. I would have been like a getaway driver in Texas or something like, yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah, that just goes back to all these warning movies. To be like the, the silent, uh, you know, whatever the actor is in the, in, 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 in Fargo, the criminal who's not a Steve Buscemi. No, I would have been like, also the actor yeah, the other guy in the car and they're smoking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who doesn't say a word. Yeah. No, I'd have been like in that Chris Pine movie. No, uh, What's that? What Taylor Place, Sheridan? Um, the Texas movie Taylor Sheridan made. Oh. It's so fucking good. I was yeah. going to say Place Beyond the Pines, but that's not it. No, that no, movie's no. also awesome. Amazing. That wasn't Chris Pine. Yeah. And I had a motorcycle at that time and I invited <laughs> Lauren Greenberg to watch it with me at the Arclight. Doesn't come, ends up winning Emmys. So annoyed <laughs> for the, what's that? The Craig. You had a motorcycle? <laughs> yeah, I had a motorcycle. I escaped from the cops twice on it. Wow. Yeah, it was Look awesome. Look at you. Yeah, like the criminal. I really life. did. I turned off my lights. Beverly and Fairfax in Hollywood <laughs> and uh, Coanga. So you were like Taylor Kish in True Detective season two? <laughs> Yeah, isn't he secretly gay too? Yeah. Skeleton, how yeah. dare you? I'm sorry. How dare you? That was coincidental. No, it wasn't. You know my past. And he future. knows your soul. <laughs> yes, yeah. he's looking into me. Ah. He's, he's pink. Um, so what do you guys think of, of Julianne Moore? Because this movie is the only, I think like it doesn't have much of a female um, world, but then you have the Julianne Moore scene, which I always, it's one of those that is, stays in my brain it's so funny it's fun what, what, what you saying when when he first sees sees her and she's doing this like pollock action painting yeah like Second mock season. up uh first she comes when they uh they oh, knock him out yeah yeah yeah. No, yeah the first full scene where it's like mm-hmm. she's she talks a little weird i don't know what that accent is but uh i was weirded out by it because <laughs> i was a kid and i was like i don't understand this. And she's just like you know do you you know I, Are you afraid of the word vagina? Vagina. Yeah. That was always know, strange to me as like <laughs> yeah, yeah. a twelve year old. I was like, this is intense and this, over my head. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Where men can say dick, rod, <laughs> yeah. <or> Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Johnson? I like you know what I do like in the movie a lot though, is when they intro Jackie Treehorn and he walks up on the beach and <laughs> yeah. it, it has like that boogie nights vibe. And mm-hmm. to me, like it all does. these film noirs. 
would always have like the shady character who produces porn. Porn, yeah. And it's funny because I was like, oh, maybe I'll be Jackie Treehorn one day. <laughs> that, when I saw yeah, that, yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, that's not a bad life. You yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the Boomy. fact that, that uh, Jackie Treehorn, he was like, he looked like he was jotting something down on that pad of, pad of paper. <laughs> and then the dude goes up and does that pen, pencil kind of like shaving thing. Oh, Love I know. That to, to see what it is. And I've, it's just a dude with a huge <laughs> erection. <laughs> he thinks he's going to be a genius like all the- You all can the see those, those, those noir detective movies. He's writing, yeah. you know, so you you already know there's gonna be a clue there, and then he goes, no clue, and not only no clue, it's just it's so funny that it subverts it so much. It's just it's bizarre like, too because he's also taking notes, you know. So it's obviously not a it's not a realistic, but it's so funny, so weird. Um, yeah, <laughs> and at the end, you know, you think about the plot of the movie doesn't matter, right? So he this huge complicated. Yeah, kidnapping it's like a cave thing that, that goes nowhere for no reason, <laughs> exactly. which is amazing. So he's just hanging out, you yeah. know, and and the whole movie didn't have to happen, which right. is even funnier to me. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't get anything. He doesn't get paid from all these deals that he's making. Like if you watch Clerks, the movie has to happen for the characters to grow at the end. But <laughs> yeah. at the end of the Big Lebowski, none of that had that, to happen. It changed. It it, it didn't change the characters. <laughs> And which I love because like Me he's too. so mad at him, right? Like he does the whole speech. He brings Vietnam into it. Mm -hmm. The other guy is silent. Mm -hmm. He he spreads the ashes. The all ashes all go on him. And then he just flips up on on him mm -hmm. and is like, "What does Vietnam have to do with anything? You're fuck up." Or but then they hug and it's mm -hmm. like, okay, there's just this type of friends and 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 it's awesome. It's a cool. I don't know. They're grieving. They're grieving at that point. That's their. That's their style of. Grieving. Their emotional release. I yeah. agree with that skeleton. Who's he and who's him in this? <laughs> the he, dude and so Walter. The, the, yeah, Walter and, and the dude. Or Walter. Uh, I think like Walter, because Walter definitely has your anger issues. You know, he has. Uh, oh yeah, you've he, seen me get am mad yeah, yeah, at Bobby he, he, and stuff. <laughs> he has. He has that thing that he needs to release but then he's a big teddy bear at the same time mm -hmm. and i i love walter like it's his he since he fought nam it's like this is his america right <laughs> oh yeah he, he takes back, ownership over it yeah it's like this is this is my america i fought fought for this country so it's my way and everyone else is wrong finishing my coffee <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna finish my coffee that's but, also embarrassing as a man you can't behave badly at diners like it's weird to act like him at a diner <laughs> Like I'm, that's like another I'm thing. You, my coffee. you have to remember that as a man, you yeah. can't like yell in a diner. <laughs> I've done that before. It's not okay. I got banned from swingers on Beverly for one what? year. Yeah, I think you have more experience what? than me in that in that regards. I don't think I've ever been. Who gets banned, banned from a diner? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yes. What did you do? Did you throw a glass? <laughs> did you? I flipped over? Oh, this is embarrassing, but I um, I flipped over someone's plate. <laughs> full of food like, you're like a bully like a high no it wasn't bully. like a cool like, bully thing. no 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 it wasn't like oh i'm the bully in encino man <laughs> yeah. or anything like that it was like i'm an out of control <laughs> insane person oh it wasn't like oh i'm funny or cool and right like, right like uh you were like back to the future in yeah it wasn't like back to the future i was like a crazy person and they're right. like that guy can't come back because right. he has an issue and like if he comes back we're gonna like call my manager <laughs> right like it wasn't it was like incredibly embarrassing yeah 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 so yeah i i, I see how these movies resonate with you differently than with me but yeah, and they show Benitos at the beginning uh, in the tumbleweed scene. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. right by Swingers. That's funny. Good quesadillas. Yeah. Also, the the porn movie they show, it, it had, for some reason, been engraved in my brain. You know, it's like, it is an exaggeration or whatever, but it is the theme that later on you would see. And, and uh, it like, well, because Jack Trichon, in, in the, you're right. Like, he does what the Boogie Nights mm -hmm. guy does, which is like, they long for this art form that is now video is corrupting and they're oh, just yeah. doing it. Burt Reynolds character. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's who he is. He references the same <laughs> act three and <in> Boogie Nights. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, anyway, I think like the movie has so many, so many little things that are funny and they're like heartfelt. These characters are so good. I don't know. I, I feel like if someone hasn't seen this movie, I I, I I would recommend it dearly. I think it's also this, these two guys represent, I don't know, a, a portrait of America that is at the same time, you know, satirical and they point out the bad things, but it's also very enduring. 
Yes, I, I, I I like that you're saying enduring because I think there's something to I and I'm fascinated by this character, the lovable L.A. loser with a good heart, no education, removed from the rest of America so far on the West Coast. You don't even feel American anymore. And I think there's something to that. To yeah. This person who exists uh, in relation to only pop culture and to his small f uh, friend group. Yeah. And that nothing else can really break through the deserts of like Utah and Arizona and influence anyone in California. And I think there's something to being a loser in LA that is somehow not as bad and, <laughs> as yeah, yeah, being yeah. a loser. And how it differs places. from like inside Lewin Davis is that there's a struggling artist, right? He's, yeah. He doesn't have a lot of money, but the dude is perfectly content being a loser. He's yeah. just like, that's where he wants to stay. He he's, doesn't have- Yeah, it's so ambition. interesting to find that type of person in LA. And he doesn't like think when he's everybody a come, Everybody yeah. comes to LA to do something. Yeah, the dream. Yeah. And there's someone that just being chill. The losers who just were born here and choose to stay. And writing checks. Oh my gosh. When I, oh my God, I wrote <laughs> so many bad checks. A check checks. for under $1. Yeah, I wrote 69 so, cents. When I moved here, I would write bad checks all the time at like Ralph's and to AAA. Wow. If I need to gas, I'd be right. like, AAA, please. Oh, I'll write you a check for $50, you know. And that's why a lot of places don't accept checks anymore. I, because of me. <laughs> yeah, this guy, like, Carlos, you and the dude. Santa Monica was fucking... Ass I wrote a check to an escort once. She was like, put your uh, driver's license <laughs> number on there. I was like, uh, one, nine, Mark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Scratch out <laughs> the, you know, Washington Mutual before becoming So, yeah, I, I could see, you, you know, did you ever go to the cashier with your, you know, your mustache full of milk and... and uh... Oh, my gosh, it wasn't milk. <laughs> <laughs> Doing. <laughs> Got it. Zero seven. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, I think that they, their their view on the U.S. is very unique and mm -hmm. it's funny, but it's not it's not just a critique of the U.S. I think it's a, a love for it. Yes, and and then they just like the satire to certain parts, and I think all his all their movies do that. They're just so, oh, it's just a window. I think I even heard that about the Coen Brothers movies. Um, yeah, I actually believe it was about the Coen Brothers movies, which is. Uh, the, they all exist and on soundstage and all you're doing is opening up like a fake window and looking in and watching it happen. Mm. Like they're not, they're not like uh, amplifying anything going on in Los Angeles. All the Coen brothers are doing mm. are pointing a camera but, at it right, currently in. happening. Mm. And you have to, and I, I think, just, yeah, all the characters are based on people they knew. Yeah. Yeah. I Walter mean, was based on uh, John Milius. Yes. Oh, I didn't Emily know that. The, yeah. the writer of Apocalypse Now and director of Conan. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. I didn't know that. And and the dude is also based on like, because the, uh, I don't remember the, the real name. I don't know. If maybe you know it, but no. he was part of that. There's the Seattle 7 or whatever he says in the in bed. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Like the pacifist. And yeah. So there is that that guy. So yeah, they, they do document this, this people. That's amazing. That's like a, an entourage. They were all based on real guys. <laughs> oh, real, yeah. I, saw, I heard Turtle died. Rest in peace. <laughs> and, oh. you know, we didn't really talk about Sam Elliott, but there's just the, the Sam Elliott character really motivates you to like the dude because he's like, there's just this man, right? Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to, he's in this place and time and really motivates you to like this loser <laughs> because he's rooting for him. Like, I wouldn't say hero, but he's somebody, he's a man, right? So there's there's that the motivation to really- time. For his I, time. Yeah, I, That's very inspiring for me. Whenever I heard that younger and even yesterday when I watched this again, is that I like the idea of being like a man for your time like just embodying everything. I love the idea of being a product of my environment. Mm -hmm. Like I very much do. I love like kind of being this organism that has <laughs> evolved into the walls. Like now I exist because of my environment. Like I like I love embodying it. Yeah. And just soaking it in. I think I have like a fear of death and all these things and death I feel like has really affected me in the past like 10 years. So as a result, I've I've really dove into just like absorbing all around me. Mm. Like even with podcasting, like I have to listen to every show that comes out. Like I don't go to bed till late. Like I just have to. You want to like take it. Do you I want everything in my brain. I want to learn everything now. Interesting, but yeah. because this movie does not. No, no, does not <laughs> portray that feeling. It's more no. like. But Whatever. that's a good thing for us. Play I mean, we're on the too. show here talking. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's good. I'm not exactly like Jeff Bridges in the movie. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
and he's I mean he I think this is my favorite performance of his I mm. I mean he won an Oscar for Crazy Heart and he's great in it that movie's incredible another he, arc light movie he did uh, with the Coen brothers he did True Grit he's amazing yeah. in it he did things that before before Lebowski but mm-hmm. I think this movie so he's so good in it yeah. like I said like you doesn't be, you don't think that he's acting no every line hits every joke hits is so well done but he didn't get any love at the moment in the moment you know as is usually the case nah, never for comedies yeah, yeah. not yeah. back We're, then even and yeah. comedies are harder yeah it's yeah com- easy to make a drama i mean comedies have the the it's so easy to see if it works or not you go to the movie theater if everybody you know it's not laughing you 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 lost. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. That's comedic like, actors can do uh, dramas much more easily than dramatic, dramatic a million actors can do comedies. Yeah. I agree. And they didn't know respect for it. Yeah, the a million percent. I mean, we, we talk about with Andrew about Dumb and Dumber, also like Jeff Daniels having the chops to do both because like yeah. complete dramatic actor doing his first it's comedy. It's insane. When I like, heard about his pay being so low compared <laughs> yeah. to Jim Carrey, I'm like, are you kidding me? That guy's doing just as good a job. But like, he, he wants like to right prove there. himself that he is good in that sandbox too and yeah. he's amazing. Do you guys have any faith that comedies can come back no. to what they no. used to be? No, we are. I believe that comedies will evolve, and they're evolving, and we're literally producing them. <laughs> That's what I literally think. I don't think it's going to come back to it's, it's too. I think it's so expensive to be so risky with yeah. the PC culture. I think it's very because comedies are they do represent a time. It's it's mm-hmm. very cringy to see them with your morals to today or whatever your. Whatever the the moral. I still of the think world. Animal House is funny. Yeah, no, yeah. I and but I think like if you truly are, you know, a ta- a person of your time and yeah. embrace the conventions and the when you watch something like past, like the jokes are always edgy. Yeah, and what I, was edgy back nah, then. Is Ernst Lubitsch movies still hold up. I just don't think how I see how you can be silly today and funny if it's uh, paid for by a corporation that's owned by another corporation that's owned by an oil company. I think they will come back. I mean, it is oh, true that now was your final the the was the, the, <laughs> the 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 podcasting is very funny. Like stand up still is mm-hmm. strong and right. There's, there hasn't been like as, I mean, I don't remember growing up with so many comedy specials every day and yeah. you know available to you. So. But like a, a Dumb and Dumber or like a Big Lebowski. Very hard to do. I mean, these were, I was even thinking the Big Lebowski would have just came on Netflix at Thursday at midnight if it was released. Yeah. Not sure. Not sure. I, I even think like this movie is kind of a miracle. I don't know how you come up with it. Even back like then. This. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's very, it's a unique beast. Like there's not many movies like this. Mm-hmm. I don't know what else you can compare this so to. Yeah. Yeah. And people keep watching and watching. When you watch it again, you quote it, and it's like this sort of cult following yeah. that you can't predict those or you try and write those. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, what's your favorite comedy? Mm. I think you're you're in the Judd Apatow world. No, those are the ones that. Yeah, but like the thing that makes me laugh the most. Yeah. Fuck. You know what my favorite movie was when I was a kid was fucking Clerks. Yeah. I just thought it was just so well done. It was inspiring. I know it's But not- I see the connection from Clerks to here, you know, to yeah. Big Lebowski. They kind of like lay back, hanging out. Yeah. Not super plot driven. Exactly. Like movies. Yeah. There was something to it that just like kind of like blew up my life and like exploded me into this show yeah. is insanity. But yeah, I've so that was like my favorite movie growing up. And also like like the movies that make me laugh the most is like Soul Plane or like Blue Streak, like black comedies in the '90s. My dad would take me to yeah. like that makes me laugh the most. But like, and yeah, so yeah, like the goofiest movies like that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. What about you, George? You're more classic. You go. Oh yeah, To Be or Not to Be by Ernst Lubitsch is probably the, the best. <laughs> He's uh... like, oh, at the Globe Theater <laughs> oh, with Shakespeare. <laughs> oh, that's old school. <laughs> <laughs> but I grew up, my parents loved those movies, so I watched them when I was a kid, The yeah. You're Not To Be, or the Sound Like It Hot, you know, mm-hmm. th- those classic movies that I think they're really funny and still hold up today. Duck Soup? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't a huge Marx Brothers fan, although oh, I think that one is a really Marx funny Brothers. one. Um, but I think To Be or Not To Be is, is funny, funny, funny. Mm. I also, like, playing with Nazis and trying to, you know, it's like... Yeah, of course. Uh, I think the Tarantino humor I really like. I don't know if those are like comedies. You cannot call them comedies, but I yeah. laugh a lot. And well, he calls them comedies. But yeah. yeah, 
I, I would say Wolf of Wall Street for me. I I, I know that's not a classic yeah, comedy, so but there's the, so much. Jonah Hill is so funny in it. Not not a not a straight comedy. Yeah. Yeah, not a straight. But I I, I can't. Yeah, because it's hard. It's hard with comedies. Honestly, it was like TV shows for me were my favorite. Com- like Seinfeld was like my favorite show. Yeah. Still is. But what about like something like Mel Brooks? You know, Young Frankenstein or. So I watched Young Frankenstein a million times, with my dad. But it to me it was like for him. Right, so you so I laugh. like it. Well, I did laugh, but I was like, "Well, that's his. I gotta have my own." Okay, <laughs> like let's do it. Okay, our what way. a modern version of that, like a Shaun of the Dead, you know, and like the Edgar Wright. Like I think um, those are great, but I was too old by the time they came out to influence me in that way. Right. Like okay, fair. but I think like the best comedies. Gosh, like I mean, I thought um, I, I keep going back to TV because I really do think that's where like the you best grew up with TV and but also like comedy. I love like the slow growth of it that like Apatow did with um, Freaks and Geeks. Yeah, I'm like that's incredible comedy to me because it and I love the heart in it. Yeah, and I feel like that's the difference between. Um, I feel like my generation went from Dumb and Dumber to Apatow. Yeah, and that really helped me because I didn't fully relate to. Um, What's his name? Todd Phillips' movies uh, yeah. that were in between those, Wedding the, Crashers the, and stuff. Yeah. That was a little too... I I thought... I don't know. I, I thought they were really funny. Like, they're the hangover is funny. funny and stuff. Yeah. But, like, there are parts that are, like, not funny at all. There, yeah. There's jokes that I'm like... Who wrote that? Like, what the, do you mean? Name one joke that doesn't. <laughs> hit I can't the fucking do that right now. Well, name a joke that doesn't hit in the Hangover. N word, N word, it will really <laughs> cut me looking bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, no, there are some jokes in the Hangover that aren't funny. I just like, I can't think of them right now. But yeah. there are jokes in like Knocked Up that are always funny. And I always, I think there's a difference between fucking Todd Phillips and Apatow. I think yeah, Apatow, one is better I mean, than the other. We should do an Apatow movie next because you love them and we always reference them. And I think he brings a lot of. It's an interesting blend of dr- the dramedy, you know, the, mm-hmm. the heart and the... He was and just the, a big the influence on me. Because but the, I think, like, yeah. he doesn't have that many great movies. I think he has a couple that are Ooh. that work really well. Yeah. I think, like, 40-Year-Old Virgin is really funny. I think yeah. Knocked Up is really good. And after that, I think he took his time too seriously. And it's like... Mm. Two I hour long scripts movie. After so that, good, your though. opinion stinks. <laughs> no, I, you're, so you're Trisha Paytas. Yeah, I like the <laughs> scripts, though. I like that they're, like, thought out. And well, they a movie isn't follow- the script. A movie is a movie. No. Yeah. You're right. Mean, you're right. So after all the improv. That's like saying, is a script a map or is it a book? It's a, mo- it's a map. It's yeah. A, it's so a blueprint. I, it's a blueprint. So I, I've always thought it was a book. N- and no. I like, is, but like there are philosophies to it. It's like you look at it from that angle. I like. But uh, it's a book it's that nobody meant, reads. It's not meant right. for being read. So, and then when people read it, it's not like, I mean. But when I watch stuff, I read it in my mind. Right, but I'm, it's scrolling on the coming side. Coming from the other side of like, I want to write them, I want to dissect it, yeah. I want to, but not. I'm not gonna enjoy it. I you just, know. I've always you read the Simpson a Simpson script, and it's really funny, but not as funny as when you do it like with them. You're right. You You're know. a million percent right. But I'm someone Table I would read. love to read a Simpson script right. because I already know what it would fucking look like, though. Yeah. So you know I, I, mean? I actually went to a table read and and we, uh, another chance to name drop. <laughs> no, but with with them and it's like you know you see two or three actors doing twenty voices yeah. and it's just like they have. I mean they've been doing it for it's amazing thirty years, so they know. There's crap, but like the script is nothing. It's just dialogue mm-hmm. sometimes or no, you know, the visuals then. To me, every, like, my brain stops at the script and then it becomes someone else's doing. My brain doesn't know how to yeah. put together the rest. So I stop there. Like my brain stop, it goes into entertainment mode after that. Interesting. But uh, that's why, like, I feel movies like the Big Lebowski movies, like Tarantino movies, have so much on the visual aspect that are not in the script. A million percent. There's a lot of visual comedy and a lot of artistry in the way that they... It's not just jokes. A million percent, yeah. It's, a lot of it is not in the script. It's in the... I mean, I it, referenced the long lens in, as my favorite scene. So, yeah, I'm... Like, yeah. That shot. So, I understand. I... I I don't think that's a long lens. Oh, 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 oh look oh, at this guy. Oh, no, because oh, no. like I was going to say, yeah, uh, the Coin Brothers usually use one main lens. Okay. And it's usually a wide angle lens. Mm-hmm. A different thing is that it's a longer take or a long shot, meaning like I... in time, it takes longer time. So like people, because 
it's a it's a wide the shot. director talking down to the writer. No, 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 I'm, no, no, I'm no, learning. I'm He's learning. just imagining. You I'm know, learning. What directors hate is when the the writer like <laughs> tries to tell you in the script what to do. <laughs> and here's a long lens shot. Right, because like and the director's like, done. "Bull crap! Uh, I'm the one they're directing." This. A long lens for those people who don't know what a long lens is is like it's like looking through <laughs> Carlos b- binoc- <laughs> binoculars. Yeah, exactly. So it's like capturing something that is very far away and and it doesn't you know everything. You got that... talked down to with the word binoculars. <laughs> Carlos, no, I'm learning. How does that feel? Somebody who's I'm not. Not taking it like that. I'm no, learning. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. It's, Carlos just it, got bone. It's not good. That's my I'm new catchphrase. School. Carlos got bone. It's not meant to be like that. It's more like they, they you know, like uh, as Spielberg, like we talk about, like, they use, you know, wide angle lens because they they play a lot with blocking, like a lot of characters. You laughing? Movement. You're just you're laughing. He doesn't like. Man. Okay, he's I, laughing at school. I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> Kick him out of class. <laughs> You're going to James Franco's class and it's in his Bronco. I'm just thinking of more things. You have to sit in the front. <laughs> Somebody I'll stop. I'll stop. Okay. okay. But yes, I, I understood what you meant and 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 yes, a lot of a lot of things happen in the blocking and letting it look, for example, a lot of those scenes in the bowling uh, alley when Jeff Bridges and or like the dude and Walter are talking and Donnie's in between them. Yeah. If you just look at Donnie, you you can see the whole theme through his you know he's only reacting he mm-hmm. doesn't have a line but you have a million expressions and so like it's beautifully done it's yeah. like great choreography I think it's just it's amazing it's a great great movie and it's it's a good script it's a great movie I love it okay so uh, final final uh, question that we always do in the show is like why would people uh, should watch The Big Lebowski. What would you tell them? Um, I think if you want to see if a girl really loves you, uh, <laughs> see if she'll sit with you through the whole thing. Uh, it's useful for that. And you get, uh, you're get you entertained on your own, too. Okay. If she leaves, you can still, uh, still enjoy the last half an hour of your day. I think it's an amazing comedy, and it's... Um... And it's shorter to watch than um, like a Netflix show, <laughs> like than binging a Netflix show. So you can watch an amazing comedy in just seventy five minutes. Okay, that's almost two hours, isn't it? Okay, hour, well, trying to make hour it and fifty seven minutes. I was you trying just to make bone. it easy. It's a, it's you just two, got bone. It's a two hour movie. Yeah, but um, yeah, my my. <laughs> Fuck you, skeleton. <laughs> he, he loves bad bone jokes and bad jokes. No. Um, okay, I would say that it is watching. A great movie from one of the, you know, or from two of the best filmmakers that the yeah. 80s, 90s have brought to us in in the U.S. and at the peak of their of their superpowers, you know, mm. the Corn Brothers kind of broke up uh, after doing uh, Louis Davis, and then yeah. they did the the Ballad of uh, something but, something. Oh, yeah. Scruggs. yeah, and then they they broke up right like Joel did Macbeth last year. Mm that it was an okay movie, but it didn't have the magic. Ethan did his own movie. I think they're in the future. I I, I heard an interview that they're doing again. They're coming okay, back cool. together. So I'm, I'm looking forward for them. But I think Fargo, Big Lebowski, the peak of the careers. Yes, I agree. You guys should watch it. Yeah. And see you next week. Bye. <laughs>